Hey, what's up guys, Grid Guy here. Today we are taking a look at the G-Shock watch. Now the G-Shock watch is manufactured by Casio and they make a ton of them. So no matter who you are, they have a watch out there that's gonna match your style. Let's go ahead and jump into this video. And now you've got yourself something funky. All right, now the G-Shock is a line of watches manufactured by Casio. The design itself is supposed to be able to resist mechanical shock, and that's the name of the G-Shock, the Gravitational Shock. Yes, that's really what it stands for. The G-Shock, uh, primarily designed for sports, military applications, uh, outdoor enthusiasts, those are the types of people that might enjoy a G-Shock watch. Um, not all of them are digital, some are analog, it really kind of depends. They make aviation watches, scuba diving watches. Um, all of them offer a light feature, um, all of them offer a stopwatch uh, timer as well, I believe. So uh, these particular watches are incredibly sporty, and most of the people that, that really appreciate them are the people that aren't looking for a watch for a nice dinner, but they just want something that they can throw on and wear day after day, and it will hold up. So, as you'll see in this video, there are absolutely tons and tons of G-Shock watches for girls, guys, whatever the case. Some are dressy, some are just more for play or bright fancy colors. Uh, so, there's going to be plenty of them to take a look at, but let's dive into the history of the G-Shock just a little bit. The first G-Shock Casio watch was the DW5000C. It was designed in 1983 by an engineer by the name of Kiku Ebel? 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 Ibel? I'm not sure. It looks pretty hard to pronounce. It was designed to have a 10-year battery life. Now, that really doesn't often happen in most watches. Um, I mean, I've had several G-Shocks, and I usually get a couple years out of them before the battery is any kind of an issue. However, some of that may be partly my own doing. Um, I like to keep my little light thing on um, as frequently as possible. And if you don't know what that is, that means you can press and hold the button, and the light will come on for about 20 seconds. And then every time you turn your wrist up for the next 12 hours, the light pops on automatically. So if it's nighttime, you don't have to press the button. You just move your wrist, light pops on. Pretty cool little feature on the G-Shock watches, on most of them. Uh, so again, supposed to have a 10-year uh, battery life. I don't know if any of them have lasted that long. Supposed to be able to survive a fall of 10 meters onto a hard surface. That's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see, there are 200 prototypes uh, tested, or there were 200 prototypes tested by dropping them from rooftops or even third story windows, which you know, that's about three, three, ten, that's about 30 feet there, so you know, maybe 30 to 35 feet. The shock resistance design has 10 layers of protecting uh, protection there. Now what that means is the quartz timekeeping module inside is protected by 10 layers of protection, whether it's rubber housings, grommets, those types of things, hard plastic. Um, basically what they're saying is the quartz timekeeping me uh, mechanism inside is what has that protection on it. That's not layers of protection, you know, protection against water or anything like that. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting to note as far as that protection is concerned is the actual buttons on this phone, this watch, excuse me, are not connected to the watch body on the inside. Whereas most, uh, you know, watch computers on the inside have those external buttons and you press on it and it presses a switch which auto automatically, you know, makes contact with the device uh, signifying to change the watch mode. On the G-Shock, they're not. Each one of those buttons is connected by a wire that runs over to the mechanism which is free floating, uh, meaning it is suspended in a urethane foam cradle. And then those wires enter the device and that kind of helps to keep it, that's part of its protection. But interesting to note, these buttons are connected by wires as opposed to metal uh, pieces that touch the quartz device. 